All right, guys. Well, here I am in my normal glowing radioactive state. And uh, it's taken me more time than I expected to go through these verses and to point out every little piece of grammar to you. So you don't get any green screen silliness this week, just me talking to you and pointing at verses in John. And so if you look carefully at these, you'll see that in each case what I do, I look at conjunctions, I look at prepositional phrases, I try to look at those substantives and show you how the case endings are working, and then I look at the verbs and try to show you how the, the various tense voice mood person number is functioning, and then we deal with the participles. So verse by verse, what I'm doing is taking all this grammar that we've been learning and applying it to each verse. So it goes a little slowly, but I want you to watch these verses 1 through 23 and watch how I take them apart just piece by piece and understand every little thing about them. And then just read on ahead and see what you can do as far as the, uh, the last verses. So um, happy, happy studying. See you later. Go back to my radioactive hole. That, by the way, I think is really cool. That is actually how the outside looks like right now. It's really blue and anyway, it's sort of cool. Radioactive world is a cool place to live. In arche ein halagas. Kai halagas ein pras tan thaan. Kai thaas ein halagas. We notice the conjunctions kai, and we break this into phrases. These are independent clauses. Each could stand as a sentence. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. God was the word. We pay attention to our prepositions. In with the dative just means in. In always takes the dative. Pros with the accusative means towards or with. In this case, clearly it's with. God. On our substantives, we notice the case endings. These are controlled by the preposition in with the dative. Notice the eta there with the iota subscript. Pros with the accusative, right? There's our on right here. And then we have everything else is nominative singular masculine. And that's because in this verse, we have this word ain, which is a to be verb, so these are all predicate nominative. Anytime you say this is that in Greek, both the this and the that will be in the nominative case. So for example, God was the word, it's nominative nominative, that's called predicate nominative. Speaking of ain, look at all these instances of ain, it's just a way to say was in Greek, it's a form of to be. And I can't say enough about this chart right here, especially the present and imperfect forms you will see everywhere. Ain, right here, he, she, or it was, a form of to be. Verse two, if only they were all this short and easy. Hutas ain in arche pros tan thaan. Here the repetition of the same prepositions with their same objects in with the dative pros with the accusative. The subject of this sentence is a near demonstrative pronoun, this, hutas, right? So this, and we supply the subject, the implied subject, this one. It's a nominative singular masculine. So this one was in the beginning with God. See what I mean? Ain is really important. Panta di autu agenata. Kai choris autu agenata ude hin. Again, we pay attention to our conjunctions and our punctuations, and we see, again, we have this divided into two nice independent clauses. All things came to th be through him, and apart from him, not one thing came to be. Then we notice our preposition dia with the what case here? Genitive, right? Dia autu. But wait, where's the alpha? Well, it's, uh, it's gone, but we have the apostrophe to show us that it's missing. So dia here plus the genitive means through. All things through him. Now we also have choris autu, apart from him. Choris is actually an adverb, but it's used here like a preposition with the genitive, means apart from him. 
notice that even though autu means his, because of the preposition, we ignore that. Dia plus the genitive means through him, and choris autu means apart from him, not apart from like his or something like that. No, apart from him. Moving on to the substantives, here we have panta, all things. It's from pas, everything. So notice it's pant a. So what is this? Well, it's nominative plural neuter. Or it could be, of course, accusative, but in this case, it's the subject of the sentence. All things through him came to be. So it's nominative. Notice it's all things. How do we know it's not all people? Because it's neuter. So it's all things through him came to be. And apart from him came to be not even, ude, and not hen. Not in, but hen. Notice the rough breathing and the accent. That is a form of one. And in English, of course, we only have one form of one, but in Greek, we have all 12 here. Heis mia hen. Not even one thing, hen, came to be. So, uh, notice it's one thing again, because it's neuter. Well, let's look at this rascally verb here, agenata. It comes from genomai, which you can see is deponent. It has that middle passive ending, amai. That's in the active tense stem, but notice here in the aorist tense, again, amen. It's also deponent, see that ending, amen? And it's also a second aorist because gamma iota noon has become gamma epsilon noon. So this is just a second aorist, which is also deponent, okay? Again, amen, that would be I came to be, but it's again, eta, right? See the ending, eta. He, she, or it came to be. So, panta dia tu, di autu, agenata, kai choris autu, agenata, came to be, ude, hin. Read verse 4 with me. Ha geganen in auto zoe ein. Kai he zoe ein ta fos ton anthropon. Again, paying attention to conjunctions and punctuation, we have two nice independent clauses here. That which came to be in him was life. That's one, could stand as a complete sentence, but it's held together with another complete idea with this conjunction chi. And the second independent clause here is, the life was the light of men. That which came to be in him was life, and the life was the light of men. In with the dative here, auto. So it's not in to him. We don't use the keyword when we have the preposition, just in him. Let's look at our substantives here. We start off with ha, which might fool you, and you might think, oh, that's the article, but it's not. Remember, if you have a rough breathing and an accent and something that looks just like the, the case endings, it's the relative pronoun. So in this case, ha, is which, not who, because we're looking at a neuter subject. That which came to be in him was life, zoe. What case is that? Right here, nominative, singular, feminine, right? And the life, and so we repeat it again, nominative, singular, feminine, was the light, phos. Now here we have our first third declension noun. Remember it's from phot is the stem of that, but it, here's our ending, sigma, so it was the light, here it is, actually it's the one I use for the paradigm here, so that makes it easy. The light of men, ton anthropon. Case number and gender, genitive, plural, masculine, right? Now it could be masculine, feminine, or neuter by the form, but we know because it's men, men is a masculine noun, so this is nominative, plural, I'm sorry, genitive, plural, masculine, we use our keyword of, the light of men. And I should point out that again we have, look at all these nominatives, it's predicate nominative. Here's our to be verb, the life was the light. Nominative, nominative. Again we have the form of to be, which is the imperfect third singular, was, he, she, or it was. And again, we have this pesky verb, geganin, from genomai, 
but look at the perfect form here. Gagana. Okay, I'm sorry about this word. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's pretty common, so you need to learn all these different forms, but we saw that it was a second eris, but here it is in its perfect tense stem, Gagana. And notice it's colored red because it's a second perfect. And remember, all that means is that we're used to seeing a kappa, right, to tell us that it's a perfect. We don't get a kappa here in the perfect active. It drops it. But we do have something that looks like a nice reduplication, so it's somewhat recognizable. And then we have the third person singular ending, n, down here, right? Gagana, gaganas, gaganin, right there. It is kind of cool that when John is saying this, he tells us that the things that come to be in him, in Christ, they come to be and remain, perfect tense. Probably significant there. Kai ta phos in te skatia fine. Kai he skatia au ta u kat elaben. Once again, breaking this into phrases, we have our two conjunctions, kai again, and these nice independent clauses. The light shines in the darkness. The darkness does not understand it. And of course, our preposition in, in takes the dative, and in this case, dative feminine, right? See the etas and alphas right here. Our articles and case endings here. Here we have the subject of this phrase right here, tafos, nominative singular neuter. And notice that the article matches here, right here. And here we have teskatia, which we have already looked at, dative, dative. And here we have another, this one is nominative singular feminine. So we have he and we have skatia, nominative singular feminine, showing that Heskatia is the subject of the phrase here, the darkness did not overcome it. Now our verbs, we have fine from fino, so we can see that the stem didn't change and it uses the primary active ending, it's present active indicative, third person singular, the light is shining. And then cat elaban from cata lambano, and here we have lambano from our principal parts chart, remember present, future, aorist. So look at this aorist, it's colored pink, and you should be able to see that that's a second aorist because lambano becomes lob, el laban. So there's a stem change there, there's an augment, and so we use secondary endings. Um, and so cot elaban means it overcame or understood. I think John here is trying to show us that the darkness can neither understand nor overcome the light. So uh, sometimes John uses words that way with double meanings, intentionally, I think. Egenata anthropos, apestalmenas para theu, anima auto ioanes. Breaking it into phrases here, notice it's the punctuation that helps us. Agenata anthropos, a man came, having been sent from God, a participial phrase, named to him John, and this all modifies this man. He's sent from God, his name is John. Para theu, here's our preposition. Para, here, with the genitive means from. Theu, hopefully you recognize that as genitive down here. From God. Looking at our case endings here, we have anthropos, which is a nominative singular masculine, so we know that's the subject. A man came, having been sent from God, this participle we'll look at in just a second. Anima auto Ioannes, name to him John. Okay, we would translate that, of course, his name was John. Anima is from ana, anima, well, that's the lexical form, right? Anima. Atas ta. This is a mat stem noun, so we know it's neuter, and in this case it's the subject. Name to him John. Now, Ioannes is actually nominative case too. We've seen this before that names sometimes decline irregularly. Driving home the point here, looking at our verbals, agenata, we've seen before, right? From genomai. It's a second aorist, notice how it's changed, and it's also deponent, amen, okay? 
Genomai becomes again amen. Amen, yes, middle passive there in the aorist form. So we use the middle passive ending eta, but translate it actively because it's deponent. He came. Now our participle. You'll notice here, apestalmenos. How do I know this is a participle? Well, the men in the middle is always a great clue, right? Also, we have this verbal idea, apostello, with a case ending on the end. Well, that's a participle. Obviously, nominative singular masculine. And how would we know it's perfect participle? Well, this is a reduplication. Apa here became op a, and we also have another clue. This men does not have a connecting vowel. If remember that, that's one of the clues for the middle passive participle. We don't have apestal amenas as we would in the present or aorist. There's no connecting vowel. So there are two clues there that that's perfect. So this man came having been sent from God. Notice the case number and gender matches the man being sent. This is an adverbial participle describing the coming. There's no article before it. Hutas elfen es marturian hina marturese peri tu fotas. Hina pontes pistusosin di autu. Looking at our conjunctions and phrases here, here we have our main clause here. Hutas elfen es marturian. This, this one, this man came es marturian to be a witness. In order that he might bear witness concerning the light, in order that all people might believe. So we have this main clause and then two subordinate clauses in order that this might happen, in order that that might happen. Here are the prepositions with their objects. Here we have ace with what case here? Martyrion. Accusative singular feminine, right? So ace with the accusative. Ace always takes the accusative. It means into, in, or among. So this one came into a witness, uh, what? In a witness? Okay, well, what we will find is that our prepositions are really more flexible than our little blue chart um, shows us here. There's more range of meaning. So clearly in this case, this man came in order to be, right, a witness as a witness. And then here we have peri, with what case here? Tu fotas. Peri tu fotas. What's going on with this one? Well, that's genitive, right? Genitive, and here we have photos. That looks nominative singular, right? Os? No, because it's third declension. So this is actually a um, genitive, neuter, singular, and you can see that even though the declension doesn't match, the case number and gender do. We've seen that over and over. These are both genitive, singular, neuter. Okay, so we came peri with the genitive means concerning or about. So we translate this concerning. This man came concerning the light in order that everyone might believe di autu. And here again, we're missing our alpha, but dia with the what case here? Autu, genitive, right? So this is dia with the, the genitive is through, that everyone might believe through him. Here are the rest of the case endings. We have hutas. Hopefully you recognize this as the near demonstrative pronoun. It means this, and clearly this is substantival. So this what? Well, because this is nominative singular masculine, we say this man. And obviously we're talking about John the Baptist, so that makes sense. Hutas, Elton, he came as a witness. Um, and then skipping down, in order that pontes, in order that everyone, okay, what's pontes? Again, from pas. And notice this in the down here, the nominative plural masculine form, um, so, so that all people, all people might believe through him. Let's look at our verbs here. So this one came, eilfen. Okay, I hope you recognize this. It's from erchemai. Erchemai has a second aorist, eilfon. This is a very important one because it shows up a lot. So this is I come and aelthon would be I came. Okay, and so because our ending is not on here, 
first person singular. It's in, which is third person singular. This man came. As a witness, henna, and as soon as you see henna, you think subjunctive ahead. And sure enough, there it is, henna martyrese. Here's our clues, though. We have this big fat vowel there. Now, is, remember with the subjunctive, it's either present or aorist, one of the two. And the only clue you're going to get that it's aorist usually is the sigma. This is from martyreo. So it's martyre se, sigma tells you that it's an aorist. And here we have, in order that everyone, we have another henna. So, okay, here comes a subjunctive, and here it is. Pistu so seen, aorist or present. The sigma tells you it's present. Notice the knight's fat vowel right there. Uk ein ekenos tafos al Hina martyrese peri tu fotas. Our conjunctions and clauses here. Uh, he was that one was not the light. Uk ein ekenastaphos, al hena, but in order that he might bear witness concerning the light. Uh, clearly, we're missing a verb here, and Greek will do that. Aelfin is the missing verb. He came, but he came in order that he might bear witness concerning the light. So sometimes if Greek thinks a word is obvious, they'll just leave it out. But we have these two phrases here, this independent clause and then a dependent clause in order that he might bear witness concerning the light. Do you see why that's dependent? It's not a complete thought, is it? If I say to you, in order that he might bear witness concerning the light, you need more, right? It's not a complete thought. So it's a dependent clause. It depends on this independent clause here for ex existence. Here we go again, same as last verse, peri with the genitive, genitive neuter here, photos and tu here. Peri with the genitive means concerning. That one was not the light. Akenos uk ein tafos, okay? Akenos is that, it's the far demonstrative pronoun, nominative singular masculine, see that ending? And tafos is also nominative, but in this case, it's uh, singular neuter, tafos right here. And ta, of course, is our nominative or accusative article. Same with phos, it could be nominative or accusative. But because we have ain here, this is another predicate nominative. That one was not the light, nominative, nominative. Here we go again with ain, uk ain, not he was, ain, a form of amy, so he, she, or it was, not was, this is a, an adverb negating the verb, not was, that one, the light. And then the repetition of hena martyrese, in order that, we see that, we look for the subjunctive, and once again, here it is, same exact one from martyreo, becomes martyrese, and because it's sigma eta, it is an aorist active subjunctive. Ein ta fos ta alethenon ha fotedze panta anthropon erchamenon eis tan kasman. Paying attention to our punctuation, we see three phrases here. He was the true light, which enlightens every man. Now this is a relative clause set off by this relative pronoun here, and in this case it's dependent, right? Which enlightens every man is not a sentence, it doesn't stand on its own, it's dependent. He was the true light, which enlightens every man, and here we have a participial phrase, also dependent, coming into the world. So he was the true light, which enlightens every man, coming into the world. Just one preposition here, ace, always takes the accusative, you'll see, and it means into, so ace ton kosmon, into the world. There's the accusative singular masculine. Here we have a nice adjective, the true light, and remember the adjective has to match what it modifies in case, number, and gender. So the, the true has to modify the light. It both has to be accusative neuter singular here, and you can see the article kind of gives that away. Of course, it could be nominative or accusative, but in this case, 
because Aletha non is clearly accusative. We know this all has to be accusative. So he was the true light. Ta fos, ta Aletha non. Here is our relative pronoun, ha, which enlightens. Remember, rough breathing and accent, and here it is. So it's this one is nominative, neuter, singular. Here we have every man, another adjective, panta, anthropon. And you'll notice that in this case, it's accusative, singular, masculine, right here, panta, and then anthropon, accusative, singular, masculine. Here is the to be verb again. He was ain, right here. Here we have a nice easy verb from fotidzo becomes fotidze. So I fotidzo means I enlighten. So fotidze means he, she, or it enlightens. In this case, it's clearly the light, so it enlightens. And then our participle coming, ercha menon. Notice the men there, so we know it's middle passive. It's from erchamai, and notice that it hasn't changed. It hasn't, hasn't become eilthon or ilus or anything like that. So this is a present middle passive participle. What is the case number and gender here? Hopefully you know that one by now, right? We got our on ending, so we're looking at accusative singular masculine. So coming into the world, and notice it matches the man coming into the world. Ein ta fos ta alethanan ha fotidze panta anthropon erchamenon eistan kasman. In to kasmo ein kai ha kasmas di autu egenata kai ha kasmas autan uk egno. Here again we have three nice independent clauses separated by kai and. So he was in the world. The world came to be through him. The world didn't know him. Prepositions and their objects getting easy now, right? We have in with the dative, to cosmo in the world. And here we have dia again with the genitive. Dia with the genitive means through. In always takes the dative and means in. So in the world and through him. Looking at the rest of our case endings here, we have the subjects. Uh, nominative case here, ha cosmos, makes sense, right? Nominative singular masculine, cosmos. So the world came to be through him, and the world, ha cosmos again, him did not know, did not know him. See how autan is receiving the action? So autan here is in the accusative case, accusative singular masculine. Ain. And agenata, we've seen before, ain again, form of Amy, he, she, or it was. So in the world, in this case, he was. So the subject is here. He was in the world, and the world through him, agenata, from genomai. And again, we have this weird <laughs> um, second aorist that's also deponent, and it becomes again eta, he, she, or it came to be. And then the last verb in this verse, egno, is kind of a pain in the neck. It's from ginosko, and it's an important one to recognize. Look at this second aorist form, egnon. Now we're used to the ending being on, right? Egno in the second secondary, egnon, but it's egnon. And you can see in the third singular here in this verse, it's egno. So it's kind of a pain in the neck, but the thing to recognize with ginosko which means I know is the gamma noon together like that. So when you see that, think gnosko. In this case, it's a second aorist. It means he, she, or it knew. So, in to cosmo ein, kai ha cosmos di autu agenata, kai ha cosmos autan uk egno. Uk, of course, negates. It's an adverb that negates the knowing. Not he knew, in this case. It knew. Verses 1 through 10 now. See if you can follow this, not only uh, the Greek, but also the grammar of this. In arche ein halagas, kai halagas ein prastan thaan, kai thaas ein halagas. Hutas ein in arche prastan thaan. 
panta diautu egenata, kai chorisautu egenata ude hen. Ha geganin in auto zoe ein, kai he zoe ein ta fos ton anthropon. Kai ta fos in te skatia faine, kai he skatia auta ukat eleben. Agenata anthropas, apestalmenas paratha u, anima auto ioanes. Hutas elfen es martyrian, hina martyrese peri tu fotas, hina pantes pistusosin di autu. Uk ein ekenas tafos, al hina martyrese peri tu fotas. Ein tafos ta alethanan, ha fotidze panta anthropan, erchamanan estan kasman. In to kasmo ein, Kai ha kasmas diautu egenata. Kai ha kasmas altan uk egno.